this morning I was recording a video and it didn't go well so I'm now trying again Biblical dualism that is a biblical dualism even as much embodied in the gospel itself so if you know what dualism is this may sound really heretical but I say this and truly I do not, I do not believe in Gnostic dualism is not what I'm advocating for. So I said that Gnostic dualism was unbiblical and Eastern dualism unbiblical, blah, blah, blah. And then you have biblical dualism, which is biblical. And what's come up is, okay, about predestination. And then the two kinds of sorrows and then two kinds of punishment. So I have put two pictures here. PH skill picture and the hot cold picture and I know here that the PH scale picture accounts for harmonious dualism and then the cold hot picture temperature picture scale for the conflictual dualism so there's biblical dualism and conflictual dualism and that makes it interesting because that, in that case Christian is the only fate wherein dualism itself is dual because there's conflictual dualism and harmonious dualism in the Bible and it's even pictured in this because you have a passage wherein it says the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and then also a passage wherein it says the God of Abraham, Isaac and Israel and then in the New Testament, God calls himself the one who was and is and is to come. In Revelation, I mean, the book of Revelation. But also, the one who was and is and is to come. It's not only one who is and was and is to come, but also who was and is and is to come. There are also two pictures of the tabernacle. You could say the outer courtyard and the holy place and the holy of holies. And the, the latter two are inside of the tent of the, in of the gathering. But you could also say, okay, the tent, the Mishkan, and the outer courtyard. And then what brings it together, yet again, is the, I would say, the holy place, or at least the end to the holy place. But as for the tabernacle itself, it is more of a Trinitarian picture. Trinity is displayed in the tabernacle. Because once again, you have the outer courtyard and the holy place and the holy of holies. Symbolically, it stands for the Holy Spirit and then the Son and then the Father. Uh, the human body is a trinity. Body, soul, spirit. God is a Father, Son, Spirit. This is not about Trinitarianism, this is about dualism. And how to say it? You have this picture in the human body, right? In the human Trinitarian being, uh, person. It says in Genesis 2 that God formed Adam, the body of the dust of the earth. And then he blew the breath of life in, into him, spirit. And so Adam became a living soul. So God did not create Adam's soul, but it uh, started to exist as a product of his body and his spirit. Just like in the Trinity itself, neither the Son nor the Holy Spirit are created. But yeah, the Father and his image is the Son, which is also why Jesus called the Son, because he is his image, he exists as a product of him. And then the Holy Spirit projects from both. So picture of the Trinity, you're just a person. And if someone looks at you, how do they see you? By looking at your body. So your body is your image. And then if you look into the mirror, what you see is not your image, but what you see is your reflection. And so if in the mirror, you put up your right hand and then your reflection, puts up their left, but then it looks like, uh, I mean, it is the same arm, but it's mirrored. The image is mirrored. So it's not an image, but a reflection. Just a picture. And what I noticed here, okay, first of all, in pH scale picture, you have acidic, pH neutral, and alkali. And the center is, is uh, pH neutral, that makes it harmless, both acidic and alkali, because there's this harmony that Jesus. He brings together soul lordship is just legalism and then soul saviorship is just liberalism and that's his biblical dualism so he stands between and he becomes sort of the center that brings these two together like the human body and the spirit are brought together by the soul but then it is not the same picture because 
body and the spirit are in conflict with one another. The conflict was dualism. Then you have the picture of the, the temperature scale. So cold is bad and lukewarm is even worse. And Jesus says in Revelation chapter 3. But then a hot being on fire for God is positive. And with the pH scale, acidic and alkali are both harmful, but then pH neutral is the harmony. And it is safe. And it is life. So having explained all that, for the note, okay, we can flip to dualism. They are like water and oil. But they cannot mix because then you get lukewarmness and Jesus is disgusted by lukewarm Christians, by lukewarm faith. He totally hates it. Okay, then harmonious dualism with the picture of a foreground and background. In conflictual dualism, you have the head and the tail. And so, a foreground, background, take the picture of the menorah. It is this lampstand, and on one side it is light, it is uh, pleasure to the eyes, but on the other side it is uh, just this bright light which is burning your eyes. And you, you're disgusted by it, you hate it. And then you can have the picture of liberalism, the light, and then legalism, which is the almond, the, the scary part of the menorah, of the lampstand. But there's still one lampstand. So it is this harmonious mix of both. And one time the Christian is to display this light, right? This love, this humility and all that. And then another time they should be more scary. They should be more judgmental in the good sense, of course, not in a righteous sense. But just like the apostles wrote after the first or second rebuke, ban them from the church. Don't talk to them, excommunicate them. But then also with the conflictual dualism because you have the picture of the head and the tail. So one is supposed to be on the foreground and then the other is supposed to be on the, on the background and that just has to stay in the way. Jesus is supposed to stay the head of the body and we the body, we the tail. And the it can swap, right? Which is not what it was supposed to be because first of all you had a Jew and Gentile, and then Jew was the head and Gentile with the tail, but then prophecy fulfilled and you got the Jews diaspora, then the Gentile became the head and Jew the tail. But there's also like was prophesied that in the latter days Israel will be brought back together and they will start to form the head again and Gentile becomes the tail and then Israel will repent and their eyes will be opened to the Lord, to the Messiah. So having explained all that, now the light of the gospel, you, once again, pure saviorship is liberalism and it is hypergracialism. And then the opposite is pure lordship. It is pure liberalism. It is pure hypogracialism. So you have hyper, you have hypo, and these two are opposite. So explain dualism of the Christian, the Christ. Once again, you cannot just have his lordship, you cannot just have his saviorship. If you want to be saved, you both need to accept his lordship and his saviorship. So some Muslims, for instance, they want to refer Allah as their lord. But then they go save themselves through their own righteousness, through their own works. Which is lukewarmness, which is what fails to save them. And then... You have some who are just liberal, who believe in pure saviorship and not the lordship. And they're likewise sinful. And I mean, they are worse, but once again, it is not as harmful as pure legalism, since that is Alkali. You get the picture already. So we are to bow down before him and accept every dual aspect of God's character, of the saviors, Yeshua. Jesus Christ, his character, that he is both a God of life, and he's not the God of the dead, but he's right to judge and to condemn. And he's both graceful and merciful, and he's both innocent and blameless, and he's both loving and just finding the wrath, and he's both Lord and Savior, and that all together makes him Lord. So I will call upon him the name of the Lord will be saved. And if you call upon the name of the Lord, then you also confess him to be for who he says he is. 
And if you do that with a genuine heart, you will be saved. You will receive the Holy Spirit who will convict you, guide you, make you whole and lead you in the ways of the Lord. And you will be an instrument of salvation, convicted others with humility, guiding them with boldness, making them uh, holy in holiness and leading them in the ways of the Lord. And complete surrender is to deny yourself, take up your cross daily and follow Yeshua. Amen. And you see this, what I noted down here, I'm not trying to advocate for sinner's prayer or whatever. So that's the end of the video. May the grace of the Lord be with you all, I'll guide you. And I pray that you receive his, his love and his mercy and that you are truly able to live as a Christian. A Christian means little Christ. So you represent his life. Amen.